Good evening. So today's topic is tidy data. So first of all, you've probably read um, on the internet or on uh, papers, whatever, that most time spent analyzing data is actually spent cleaning data. Um, that is very true in general. Depends a bit on your field, but that is true, at least in my experience. Um, and I think the main reason is that because uh, people that um, give you the data are not familiar with the concept of tidy data. And I think uh, the, the main issue here is that they prepare the data in a way that makes sense for humans, that is easy for humans to read, but is not uh, how your computer would like to have the data especially if you're working with a programming language like Power or Python and you're not working with a spreadsheet application. So the data usually that uh, I receive is in a format that makes sense either for humans or from the perspective of um, a, an, an analyst using the data in a spreadsheet application, but does not make sense at all whenever you want to work with uh, R or Python or any other programming language. So. Um, I have here a paper that was published by Hadley Wickham uh, about tidy data, about this, about this concept. So um, I'm go not going to talk or discuss the paper. Uh, I recommend you read it, though. It's a very interesting paper, and uh, it really explains um, the, the problem in a very detailed uh, manner. I'm just going to go through one example just to illustrate uh, what is tidy data and why it is really important. So let me just yeah, zoom in. Let me just look for the table that I want to show you. So this is a table that comes from a Pew Research report that uh, shows the distribution of uh, income by uh, religion or religious, um, I don't know how to say it, by the religion of the people that were surveyed, basically. So um, you wish, we see that they um, surveyed uh, agnostic people, atheistic people, Buddhists, Catholics, etc. And this is a table that makes perfect, perfect sense for human, easy to read. You can simply uh, understand very quickly that there is one person that is Hindu and that has an income that is less than uh, $10,000 a year. Okay, whereas you have, uh, I don't know, 30 Jehovah's Witnesses who have um, an income that is above 50k and below uh, seven, uh, 75k. So um, I'm going to take this table, I'm going to make it slightly more complex um, and I will uh, explain to you what why tidy data is important using this table. So the way I made it a bit more complex is that I've added more columns and now each column um, has two bits of information, let's say. First of all, the country. So in this case, I said, okay, this is data for France. And then uh, starts the data for Germany. And the reason I did this is, this is uh, there is also an example like this in, um, in Adley Wickham's paper. But I did also, uh, I, I did it, I chose this example because this is really something that I had in the past a lot. I really had to deal with a lot of data that looked like that. And again, this makes total sense from the perspective of, um, of a human, very easy to read. You can also, if you're working with um, a spreadsheet application, it makes again total sense because you can simply uh, create your, your totals, right? Um, and and uh, you can drag, oops, you can, you can drag the, the formula and uh, and you have your you have your result and you're super happy with that um and that is actually a real problem uh, because whenever i tell people okay this is not uh, a very uh, optimal way of laying out data they don't understand it because they say well why i mean i can write my formula i can get my uh, my uh, the, the totals if i want uh, in rows, in columns, let me do it here as well, look, uh, it's very easy, uh, why do you say that, it, why do you say it's complicated? They, they don't really um, get it and, uh, and that is really a challenge because um, 
whenever you try to come up with you come up with some examples where you say well but you know imagine that you would like to have uh, the um, average for germany only right or by country then they say well there yeah, then in this case you know I, I i just take everything here for germany and i create and i i just take another uh, another formula i just select my my table like this uh, and it's done you know i have my got my average or whatever and um, and this is really a challenge because they don't understand that this is the problem with this type of analysis. That's fine if you have a little table and if you're doing a one shot thing and you need some just very quickly an average, a maximum or whatever, fine. But if you want to automate reports, if you want to analyze data, create plots or whatever, um, that's really not the way to go because it doesn't scale. Basically, it just doesn't scale. Um, so how can we um, take this data? How can we tidy it up? What does it mean to, to make it tidy? And then how can we use it for uh, analysis? So I've prepared a little code here um, that um, will walk, I will walk us through this, but the idea, well, actually I don't need this library so I can remove it. I just need these two libraries, the tidiers and janitor. I load the data first, okay? And if you take a look at the data, you see that it's exactly the same table as before. So now if I am interested, just as in the example before in totals, I can, of course, uh, compute uh, these totals by using uh, different uh, tidyverse verbs without preparing or tidying up the data at all. So in this case, I just remove religion from the data set and I summarize all um, and I apply the function sum, which gives me the total. Okay, and for now, it's very easy. Um, but how could i or yeah by the way if i want also in columns so it's a bit more complicated it's i, I went a bit faster yeah. this is the total uh, in rows sorry you see that we have the total over here as well so again i reproduced what i did in uh, the spreadsheet application before so i got here my total in rows and here my total in columns without tidying the data but that's all I can really do with the data in this in this format, because how could I do more complex uh, stuff? Filtering, grouping by getting you know getting my averages by country, etc. So the idea is to um, to tidy the data. The way to do it is to use uh, pivot longer in this case. Uh, pivot longer, as the name implies, pivots your data from a wide, a wide data set to a long data set, like this. Well, why is this uh, useful? Well, uh, let's take a look. So, pure religion tidy. So, now I have my data in this format. I have only three columns now. Um, I have a first column, which is the religion. I have a second column, which is the income level, where I still have income level and country mixed, but we're going to deal with that. And I got the uh, value that were in the cells before or the frequency, okay, the counts. So this is very useful because now I can reference the columns and I can filter, I can group, I can do whatever I want. Uh, for example, if I want to compute, uh, uh, I don't know, some kind of total uh, per... Um, per religion, for example, I can easily group by uh, the religion and then do um, summarize some again, frec, no, not frequency frec. Now I can do this uh, very easily. I, I did this uh, as well before, um, but in this case, it's much easier as you see, because before I had to use this pmap uh, function uh, I had to list all the columns, etc. It's not uh, super user friendly here. It's very easy. So that's the first thing. But I can do much more now if I go a step further. So I, if you take a look at the data, as I said, we got this income level uh, variable there that still has uh, two bits of information. We still have a country and we still have an income level. So I will deal with that by using the function called separate, which, uh, as the name implies, separates a column into two. So I will separate the um, income level column into um, a country and an income level. 
uh, as a separator, I use either E underscore or Y underscore. This is because I have France underscore Germany underscore. So it allows me to separate exactly where I want at the, at the first underscore. Because if I just separate at the underscore, uh, you see that um, it, I'll have some problems because the income level is um, also separated by an, by an underscore, the intervals. So let's run this. Great, and let's take a look at Pew Religion Tidy. So now you see I got four columns, and now I have the data in a tidy format. I have the religion column, I have a country column, I'm missing the last letter, but that's fine. I have an income level and I have my frequency. So now I can really do whatever I want very easily. I can group by religion, I can group and country, for example, group by religion and income level. I can filter out whatever I want to filter out. If I want to remove, for example, the income level, the, the lowest income level, and then compute a total or whatever, I can now do this very easily. If I go back to how the data was in the spreadsheet application, here it would be, again, I, I could always do uh, stuff with my formulas by selecting the cells I need, but it would always be uh, more convoluted. And as I said, it doesn't scale. It's really an approach that doesn't scale. Another way of thinking about tidy data is um, any data, if you want to stay with spreadsheet applications, is any data or table that is, let's say, um, a good input for your pivot tables. So if you're doing pivot tables in Excel or in a LibreOffice uh, calc as here, uh, actually the way to have nice pivot tables is that if your table, if your input table is also actually tidy. If it is, then again, you can really select uh, any column you want, put anything you want into rows, uh, etc. and have the filter you need, etc. So, for example, in this case, if you would do a pivot table with that, you could not use the country as a, as a filter, for example. So that's, that's a way of, another way of thinking about, um, about this uh, tidy data uh, business. So now, just to finish, um, I did some uh, little... So yeah, here I, I grouped by uh, religion and country, and I added everything up. Uh, I could also, you know, this is just by income level, but I could also do uh, income level and country and then uh, uh, sum it up. So this is everything. Now it's super easy to do before in the, the data as it was, even though it looked nice, even though it was easy to read, it was very, very difficult to do anything useful with it. Uh, I just wrote here a little function. So um, this was more just for me to experiment. Uh, it's not really directly related with today's topic, but I was thinking about the fact of, you know, how could I um, imagine that I'm just interested into grouping by one column and just, you know, getting the total, uh, every total. So I thought, could I write a function and then map a list of variables to it and get my uh, my uh, my totals. So actually, the answer is yes. So I wrote this function that I called totalizer, and now as you see here, I'm mapping two variables. I'm mapping um, religion and income level. That I'm and I'm using the function quo, which quotes um, the uh, the so it quotes the variables because the religion. If I just type religion in my console, oops, that is not what I wanted to do. If I type if I type religion uh, in my console, uh, it's an object that does not exist, right? So religion only exists within the scope of the dataset. So that's why I have to quote it. So if I run this, I get two. I get a list with two tables. The first table is my total for religion, and the second table is my total for income level. And now I thought, okay, but what if my data set has, let's say, uh, 100 uh, columns, 100 variables? Do I need to type everything? Well, no, you can actually uh, use call names to get the names of the columns, and then give that to a function called parse expressions from the R language package. And it works. So now I get, uh, I had four, if you remember, I had four variables. So I have a list with four uh, tables, which contain, well, the, the last one doesn't really make sense because it's, well, I mean, it could make sense. So how many 
you know, how many uh, rows or many individuals or many religions um, do we have that only have uh, one observation? We actually, well, the answer is two. So, um, so it's very useful. So this again, it was not is not directly related, but it still shows the way or the fact that if your data is in this tidy format, you can really do uh, anything you want very easily. And I, I really believe that the the problem comes from the fact that people don't think about don't think about the data in in that way in a way that needs to be. Uh, ingested by a programming language, but they think about data in 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 uh, spreadsheet application terms. And you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Excel is not it's not a good tool or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of hate uh, for spreadsheet applications. I'm not saying that, but spreadsheet applications are at the core an accounting tool. So they're used. They're very useful if you're doing accounting. You can do a lot of interesting things with uh, with uh, spreadsheet applications, but they're not used or they're not meant, in my view, to store data, to share data, and to uh, yeah to prepare data and to to analyze it in in depth. So I hope that um, this clarifies the difference between let's say machine readable or tidy data and human readable or uh, well untidy data and in general very difficult to handle data so if you you know have any questions just let me know in the comments down below